Hey everyone, this is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you with a special video. This is going to be another one of those origamis. It's been a long time since I did one of these. Like the last time was when I made the X-Wing paper plane. Um, but uh, if any of you guys watched my community tab, you probably saw a few days ago when I put up some pictures of an origami Charizard. Um, now this is not this is kind of a, an amalgamation of a couple of dragons I used to know how to make when I was a little kid. Um, by the way, I, I was a huge origami fiend when I was a kid. I uh, basically used a slightly modified version of an origami eastern dragon head and a western dragon body uh, and combined them with a couple of alterations here and there to make what's, uh, you know, amounts to a very Charizard-looking bit of origami. Now, um, um, full disclosure, I know some pet ants are going to be in the audience that this isn't true origami because uh, there is a little bit of glue involved because um, it is three pieces but the pieces don't lock together by folding into each other they're just adhered um, my rebuttal against that is that this is just a fun little game for kids like I'm not doing like a big fancy art piece that I'm gonna submit to anywhere this is just for any of the younger Pokemon fans in the audience that would like to, to make themselves a paper Charizard uh, now, to make a Charizard this big, you really only need one sheet of standard t um, 8 and a half by 11 inch paper. Uh, basically, I just cut some squares out of it. Uh, you need three pieces to make a Charizard, uh, two squares of one size, and then one more square that's a quarter of the size of the first two. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use full size squares so that it's larger and more visible on the camera. So, that being said, let's get to this. Okay, so step one is, well, I'll, I think I'll call this step zero. It's basically how to get a square from a rectangle of paper. Um, all you have to do is fold one side over like this on a diagonal. And then cut the excess off with a pair of scissors. Got a little bit away from me there, but I can save it. And that's how you get a perfect square. The, the perfect base for origami. Um, for a bit of added flair, see if you can find yourself some orange paper. Because uh, that would probably... That would probably look, um, you know, better for making a Charizard. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to prepare the other squares off camera. Okay, so now that we have our squares prepared, we're going to start making the actual dragon body that is Charizard. So the first thing you want to do is uh, make the body. Um, you're going to take your square and you're going to fold it on both diagonals so that, you have a, so that you have creases going, connecting all four of its corners. Um, let me tell you something, in origami, having good creases is probably the best thing you can do because it will make sure that all your other shapes in the future are proper and straight. And we're gonna fold uh, the sides to the center like this. Creases are very important telling you where the center actually is. And we're gonna do this on both sides. Starting out with something that looks very much like a traditional kite. And then we're going to do it one more time on the other side to turn it into something resembling a diamond. Yep. So you want to make sure all your creases are nice and sharp because you're going to have to unfold. And then you're going to push up like this and you're going to make a flap in the center of your diamond. Do it one more time. And there you go. Uh, now this is... In origami, we have what we call bases, which is kind of um, like a, um, 
a, an origami form from which many other things are typically made. And this one, um, at least in the books that I used to read when I was a kid, is called the fish base. Uh, it's so called because it, it has a tail, it has a head, and it has two little fins. And a lot of fish-based origami comes from, from this. Like, uh, maybe, maybe if there's any interest, I'll show you guys how to make a shark from this thing. Alright, so, um, this is going to be the tail, neck, and legs of your Charizard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half like this. And this is probably going to be one of the more awkward and difficult steps uh, for, for the younger members of the audience because it involves a collapse fold. Like, I tried to see if I could do, like, uh, guide creases for this part, but it's always awkward and I can never quite get it right. So, what you, you see here, it's flat on this side and then angled on this side. What you kind of have to do is push, push into itself like this so that the top becomes the flat part. It's okay if it's a little bit arched into itself, like a crescent shape, but the important thing is that you want to, like, you want to basically make it look like this now. Yeah, that's very important because that's how you get the arched back of your dragon body. Okay. There we go. Now, we're going to take the flap here and we're going to fold it like this. Uh, it's going to meet in the corner at one end, but not down here in the bottom. Going to make this nice and sharp. And these are your Charizard's legs. Next, we're going to make the tail. Uh, this is where what's going to be called a pocket fold. Now this one, you can, you can actually make a guide crease for yourself fairly easily. Um, fold up like this. You want, you want to see where your feet are, and then you want to try and align this part to it more or less. And once you have the crease in place, then you, you push it into itself like this. And flatten it out. And that's how you get your Charizard's tail. To make the little flame on the end of it, you take the very tip, you kind of do another pocket fold in on itself like this, and then fold it back up. And that's going to be the flame at the tip of the tail. All right, so you might have, this is where we get some a little adjustments in. We want, we want the tail to, we, we want it to basically be able to stand on the two feet and the tail. So a minor adjustment uh, here and there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the pocket fold in a little bit deeper because it didn't quite align with the feet. Yeah, there we go. So now, it, now it's touching the ground a little bit straighter. And you can make adjustments to the feet as well by folding up some toes for it. The toe part is optional. The little demo Charizard that I showed you didn't have them. But then again, in smaller origami, because it weighs less, uh, you can actually get it standing with a little bit more of a margin of error. So yeah, this, this part is just going to require a little bit of micro adjustments here and there. But basically, we have the body of the Charizard. So the next step is going to be the wings. Okay, now the wings are kind of fun. And uh, this should be simple because um, uh, in order to make a Charizard's wings, you need to first do some the one piece of origami that every school child ever should be intimately familiar with. The fortune teller. Yep. Good old-fashioned fortune teller. This is a very simple thing that pretty much every kid um, who is of school age should know how to make. Um, you just fold all four of your corners into the center of your square. Yes, the humble fortune teller is actually... Um, I don't know if it's an official base. I know this is called a blint space when all the four corners are folded into the square to make a smaller square. Um, like I don't, I the I have found that the fortune teller is actually a useful base fold for a lot of other things that I have made in the past, including my own personal origami space shuttle 
and the uh, Origami Astronaut, and um, which is roughly based off of the Yako-san and his trousers traditional uh, piece. But yes, everybody should know, like, once you fold the four sides in, you then kind of collapse it into itself on, on all of its uh, seams. Which, you make sure that you fold them into the proper seams. Yes, yeah, like this. You want it to look like a, a square, not a triangle. What is going on with you, Wake Angel? Why can you not do this? Alright, alright, I got it. I have half of it. Why can't I not get the other... What's going on with the other side? What, what's it doing? I'm sure there's a lot of children out there who've made tons of fortune tellers that are laughing at my clumsy efforts right now. But yes, you eventually get the good old-fashioned fortune teller. Alright. Now, um, we're going to completely unfold this back into a flat square. And no, I am not trolling you. you re um, the whole reason why we made a fortune teller was basically to create all of these creases. Remember what I said, creases are what make your origami look straight. So now we have all the creases that we're gonna need for our dragon wings. Uh, you're gonna fold um, horizontally instead of diagonally this time, two of your sides into your square to make a long rectangle. And then you're gonna fold two more of the sides in on top of them. So you make, you basically made a square that kind of looks like um, the the hinges on a on a two sided cabinet, and this is where you're thankful for your creases, because now you're gonna follow your creases and you're gonna flatten them out, and you're gonna do this shape. See that? It should kind of look like a boat. In fact, once you do it to the other side, you will legitimately have completed yet another origami form. Yeah, check it out. This is the origami catamaran, i.e. a boat that has two hulls. Ah, clever, huh? Alright, so now that we have the catamaran, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, fold one flap over like this, which is going to undo this, this thing in the middle and pull it flat. Then you're gonna go to the other side, and you're gonna do the same thing, folding a wing over like that. So now, you, you, at first glance, it doesn't look like you've done anything to it, but if we open it out again, we can see that um, inside you have a, a different shape, and on the bottom you have something that looks like a bow tie. Yeah, this is what you need to make the wings. Uh, so on one side, you're going to again follow your creases, and you're going to fold up and up and up, well, up and down is what you're going to do. And you, should, and you should see that that already kind of looks like wings there. Uh, then you're just gonna um, you're gonna go over here on this side, and you're basically just gonna fold a flap up like this to meet the crease, and this will be your Charizard's forelimbs. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the uh, Charizard that you saw me make um, on the community tab had um. um I, I added an extra layer of fold into the square to make it a little smaller, uh, which made the arms proportionally smaller, but it also made the wings smaller. Uh, now, when I open this up, you can see you have a structure that very much looks like a, like wings with a dragon with the dragon arms. So you're gonna take your your torso and it's gonna slide on like this. You see that? Yeah, that, that, that position is just about right. Now, this is where we're going to break the rules of true origami and use just a little bit of glue. Yeah, not, not a lot. You don't want to soak your, your, your project. We're just going to put a little dab of glue right here and right here. And those two little drops 
This is just regular old Elmer's white glue. Works the best on this kind of thing. We're going to line it up so that the leg just about overlaps a little bit. And there you go. Your, your wings are now attached to your torso. All right. Um, and personally, like, uh, this has a tendency to kind of come unfolded and make your wings look a little bit too boxy. I like to put just a little tiny bit of glue on the inside as well to make sure the wings stay flat. This isn't technically necessary, but I do find that it does make the final result look a little bit better. Just a bit. All right, so I'm gonna press this stuff together to make sure it all works, and we're gonna reconvene to make the head. Okay, so the head might be the hardest part of this. Uh, first of all, because you're working with a smaller sheet of paper, and second of all, because it's gonna be using the most complicated base we've used yet so far. So uh, we're gonna, um, this, um, the, the beginning steps of this are going to look very familiar to anyone who's been something of an origami enthusiast because we're going to start out with one of the most famous origami forms in existence, which of course is the, the paper crane. Uh, you know, legend says if you're able to fold a thousand paper cranes, you get a wish granted. Um, and we are going to start with the bird base, which is the, uh, the, you know, the, the base form used to make the paper crane. The bird base is actually one of the most, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's one, I, got, I distracted myself. It's one of the most famous bases and most often used in all of origami. And it starts simply by folding a square on itself into two ways to make a small triangle. And then you're going to flatten one of the triangles out like this so that you make a square. Then you're going to do it on the other side as well. And you make another square. So you should have a square that has two flaps on the inside of it. Uh, now you're going to take, just like we did for the fish base earlier, we're going to fold some sides up here into the center. Oh, by the way, um, if you unfold, um, if, if you fold up a bird base and then you unfold it, um, it will look like you have four fish bases. All the crease patterns of the fish bases will be in, in each of the four sectors of your paper. So it's, um, in a way you can kind of think of, of origami as fractal. Like if, and there's another base that goes beyond this called the frog base, that if you unfolded that, it would look like you had a whole bunch of, of bird bases inside of it. Origami can actually be quite amazing. Okay, so you saw me fold into the sides, and then I folded a nice sharp crease here on the top. And I'm going to turn it over, and we're going to repeat the process on this side where we fold these, these sides up into the middle. So we got... We'll have something that looks like a small kite. I'm um, sorry if my fingers are obstructing this part because the origami is getting kind of small. Hopefully I can zoom in a little bit without cutting things out of the paper. I can't angle my tripod down any further. Let me just make sure I fold in the right place here. All right, so now that we have this, uh, we're going to untuck the square and moving it along the creases, we're going to flatten it out into a nice long diamond. Yep, gotta be careful not to accidentally tear the paper here. And there we go. On the other side, we're gonna repeat the process. Unfold these two flaps. Bring, fold this one down the other way so the crease is now in our favor. And, you know, unfold the square, but going along this triangle here so that we can flatten this out into a diamond shape. And this is your famous bird base, um, so-called, because it has wings and it has a head, a, a, um, a neck and tail. Uh, if I was going to make a piece crane out of this, we would we would uh, start to fold things into the neck and tail. But for now, we're just going to open the wings up and uh, we're going to pull on the wings until the, the diamond in the center flattens out like this. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going to, so you're you're resulting in kind of like a pyramid surrounded by with with two triangles on either side. Now this one's going to be a little bit awkward to do because uh, this just kind of requires you to pinch and push. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pinch and push down until it naturally just takes this this shape. See, it just it just flattened. Like there's really nothing to this except following along kind of what the paper itself will want to do. It'll just naturally fall into this shape as you as you push. As long as you push symmetrically, it'll naturally form this shape. Then you fold it in half like this, so that you have um, this little square thing with some teeth coming out of it. And you're gonna fold it in half. And I think you're starting to see how this is already a Charizard head. But we're gonna we're gonna unfold it flat again, and we're going to at the very tip. We're going to fold up a little bit. And then we're going to fold again. And that is going to make your Charizard's nose. Now, if I was making an Eastern Dragon, I would fold. I apologize for that sudden jump cut. The, the door opened and I had to stop recording so that we wouldn't get a bunch of ambient noise. So yeah, like I was trying to say, um, if you're making an Eastern Dragon, you're going to fold this part down like that, and it will make the traditional little beard that Eastern Dragons tend to have. But since this is a Charizard, we're just going to fold it flat and away. Slightly higher up than the nose was. Just a tiny bit. Now we fold the head in half, and you open the mouth. To open the mouth, you simply take a hold of the inside, and pull it from the outside. Once you have it spread a bit, you're going to flatten over here the on what I'm going to call the cheekbones and hope that you don't get a bubble in your fold. I hate bubbles, they make unsightly wrinkles. Yeesh, it can be so difficult to get a recording done when there's other people in the house. Okay, so once you once you flattened out the cheekbones in the back, you're gonna notice that your that the horns do not lie flat anymore. This is perfectly normal. This is how it's supposed to be. So do not expect this to lie flat now that you have the mouth opened. Uh, now the last thing we're gonna do is uh, reattach it to the body. So we have our body right here. Um, the neck comes to this fine point. So we're just gonna. We're just going to push a little bit in like this so that we have something a little flatter to push the head onto. And you're going to just kind of align the head up on top like that. Like whether you want the Charizard to, to, be, to have its head bowed down like this or tied back so it looks more like it's roaring. This is all on you. But we're just going to put one little dollop of glue right here in the center of the head. Boop. Yep, just a small amount of glue right there. And... Attach it. Remember, you don't want to... You don't want to try and flatten the horns. You want to flatten around the horns. And there we go. You now have an origami Charizard. Now remember, if you use a single sheet of paper and cut three squares from that, you're going to get something this size. This is what happens when you use three full size sheets of paper. So, um, let's conclude this video. I'm going to show a, a little montage of pictures showing the Charizard from all kinds of angles in glorious high resolution photography so that I don't have to be fumbling around with it in front of the camera. But that is the basic gist. Uh, so, yeah, you're not going to hear me talk anymore, so thanks for watching.